right, well, welcome to the webinar. My name is Susan Muller, and today we're gonna to be talking about live streaming video to increase your social shares and your conversations with customers. This is one in a series of partner webinars produced by BuzzSumo. With this series, we provide great content marketing information and ideas by working with other professionals whose expertise and experience overlaps and exceeds ours. So today I'm here with Chad Abbott. He's CEO and general live streaming guru at Absent Live. Chad has years of experience as a digital marketer and he's paving the way for others to take advantage of live streaming by providing professional video services. So you see my picture there, I'm a business development uh, manager here at BuzzSumo. A major part of my job is to work with our subscribers and other users to help them leverage the power of data for their marketing projects. If you aren't familiar with BuzzSumo, I'll just give you a little bit of a background. We help content marketers improve their content through research, amplification, and monitoring. We think of the RAM process like this. When you begin creating a new piece of content, you start with research, then you work to amplify that content, distributing it to your target audience. You monitor the results and the whole process starts again. So we have a couple of poll questions just before we jump into the live streaming discussion and we'd like to get everyone's response to them. So let me go ahead and put one of those questions up. And if you wouldn't mind to just tell us whether or not you have created a live streaming piece in the past, that would be great. Okay, super. It looks like we've gotten just about everyone to vote. So let's go on to the next question. Let me close this one up. <clears throat> if you have created some type of live streaming content, tell us a little bit about the platforms that you've used. Okay, good. That looks great. Give you just a few more seconds to vote. Okay, that's about half of you. I'm gonna assume that the rest of you either haven't done it or maybe your platform wasn't listed there. Now here's one. Have you ever hired a live stream professional for help with a project? Let's see if we can get just a few more of you to vote. Okay, looks like definitely the no's are in favor um, there. Okay, and the last question is simply, do you use BuzzSumo? And by that, I mean, do you use it either as a subscriber or you use our free tools? Okay, super. Thanks for your time in doing those polls. And now I'm going to just turn things over to Chad, who is going to tell you a little bit more about his experiences and expertise in live streaming. Thanks, Susan. Um, I am Chad Abbott, as Susan said, and uh, I'd like to introduce myself really quickly and then we'll jump into uh, what we're going to accomplish here today. I'm excited to talk to you guys. My background is in digital marketing. Um, I ran a social agency in New York for a while. Um, I've always had an interest in live video. Um, there's my um, contact info, by the way, if you need to reach out to me during or after with any questions. And uh, my company now uh, is Absin Live. And uh, what we do is uh, help our clients leverage uh, live video products. Um, as a part of their, their broader content marketing strategy. So here's what we're going to go over today, and, uh, and then we'll jump into it. We, um, we're going to talk about what type of benefits in return you can expect on the time and the, and, and the money that you spend on live streaming. We're going to talk about how to get started by, uh, by jumping in, how to choose the right software platform. We'll talk a little about hardware, too. Uh, we're going to talk about how to engage your audience uh, during your broadcast. And we're going to talk about capturing people. Um, in other words, uh, using a sort of a real-world metric to to measure our success. 
and uh, and we're going to talk about um, how you can use BuzzSumo to uh, to ha uh, have better live streams too. Um, Chad, let me jump so in for a second. Uh, yeah, we, of course. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that if you have questions, we'd love for you to to ask them. Just type them into the question box. We'll keep an eye on those as we go. And whatever we don't get to answer during the presentation, we'll circle back to you at the end. Thanks, Chad. Yeah, that's great. I'm happy to take questions. And um, if, as Susan said, if we can get to them during it, we will. If not, after. So um, please, please uh, jump in. This is hopefully going to be really uh, useful for you, um, especially during the question section. So a little bit about my company. That, that's what we do. Um, production and delivery of live video content. Um, so let's talk about live streaming. Um, I think everyone in our audience is probably going to be coming at a slightly different uh, levels uh, and, and uh, levels of experience and, and background with live video. So um, if some of this is repetitive, <clears throat> I apologize, but we'll go through it quickly and then we'll jump into sort of the, the Delta section, how we can make changes to what we're doing now. So a live stream is like any live TV show, only it's broadcast over the internet. Um, they can be on any topic use any platform and have all sorts of goals and metrics that you um, affiliate with them. Some are really short, some are really long, um, and webinars are, are a great example that most people are familiar with of a type of live streaming. Um, if you notice, um, live video is becoming more and more powerful. You can see this just by the sheer number of webinars you get invited to. They're an awesome lead generation tool, they're an awesome customer retention tool, and um, I'm sure you're all getting invites to those on a regular basis from different uh, SaaS vendors and other types of things. Um, uh, webinars uh, show the power of live video, as do all of the other platforms that you're probably familiar with but may not you know, think about in the context of live streaming. Um, Periscope and also a lot of the other stuff we use, like uh, Netflix and, and uh, HBO Go. Um, so let's go uh, through um, a few cool examples of HBO Go we talked about. Um, here are some others. Um, Apple's press conferences are some of the most watched live streams in the country. You'll see a whole bunch of, uh, of people, someone um, in mostly every office uh, tuning in to do that, and they really play them up too. They get um, a lot more traction using the live stream than they do in person. That's sort of the purpose. They can grow beyond the venue and what it allows. Um, GE uh, this year did live drone tours of all the facilities around the country on Periscope. They got a ton of engagement, they got a ton of coverage for it, and uh, that's just a free platform that they use. Um, thousands of people every month pay MLB $20 to watch baseball games online. Um, they get a lot more access and a lot more options than they would with their cable provider. And even politicians today, like Rand Paul pointed out, have to do this quote dumbass live stream thing in order to stay relevant. So you've got to um, you've got to pay attention to this if you're not. And I'm hoping that after today you'll be able to do it in a much more meaningful and relevant uh, relevant way. So so everybody's doing it. Um, let's talk about why you should. Um, live streaming is one of the easiest ways that you'll find to find more fans, engage with those fans, and then convert those fans. That's sort of what we're going to talk about. Um, it's one of the fastest ways to do that with online content. Um, that's why webinars convert so well. Um, and uh, here's uh, some of the ways that you'll be able to capture that. Uh, we'll go through sort of this as an overview, and then we'll jump into more specific stuff like platforms and hardware and um, content marketing. So as a three-point overview of the uh, types of uh, benefit you'll get from a live stream, We'll start with number one, lead generation. Um, here are some concrete ways that our clients with our council find success doing lead generation with webinars. You can capture emails during the registration. That's the, uh, that's the webinar model. Um, other types of live streams, you can do the same, right? So if you're offering some sort of uh, semi-premium content, not paid content, but something that um, people will be inclined to offer at least a little information like an email address in order to receive, you'll get a lot of um, a lot of emails that way. We, we find our clients adding more people to their email list through live streams than any other method, even paid social advertising. Um, you can also gate the player instead of with an email with a, a social action, uh, so a like, a like or a follow or a subscribe. Different platforms lend themselves to those better than other platforms. You can require social interactions during it. 
right? So like, uh, you know, we'll give you a discount on your upgrade if you share the link to XYZ right now on Twitter and let us know, that sort of thing. So you'll grow your audience that way. Um, of course, when people are watching your webinar, you'll be able to tag them with remarketing pixels for your Facebook campaigns, for your search campaigns, and you'll be able to remarket to them later to sort of c c continue the conversion process if they don't convert during the webinar. Um, or to just bring them into your social audience, you can um, hit them on Facebook later to join you. And uh, of course, um, with highly produced content, you have access to in-video call to action, pre-roll, mid-roll, and post-roll ads or CTAs, depending on what you're trying to do. You'll have access to all of that with live video. Um, here's an example. One of our clients um, gated their conference live stream uh, with just an email address and a name. You could instantly start watching, and they added thousands of people to their email list that way. Um, when we talk about content marketing, um, we can talk about a number of things, but what I want to highlight here is how easy it is to use live video to build out a massive content marketing strategy in other ways. And this is something that Susan's going to talk about in much more detail later on, but here's just a few examples. Um, with a, uh, a high quality live stream of any sort, a conference, a CEO chat, a product launch, you'll start with that, but you'll gain access to all of this other content throughout the, um, the following months. So you'll be able to post a bunch of content in your blog about the live stream in anticipation of the live stream. You'll be able to obviously use the live stream itself to engage the users who are tuning in. You'll be able to gate the content afterwards and continue to receive uh, whatever you're asking for in return to watch it, uh, Facebook likes, email addresses, etc. Uh, of course, you'll be able to turn a lot of the content from the live stream into written content. So you'll be able to um, get a, hopefully a series, if not at least one um, blog post out of the webinar, con uh, webinar or live stream content. Um, long video clips on YouTube, short video clips on other social platforms, and of course, it's an opportunity both in the broadcast and afterwards to promote your upcoming broadcast. So it's hopefully a self-perpetuating cycle if you're doing it right. Um, I have a question for you, Chad. Of, we have a yeah, jump questions. In. Yeah, so this one is from Jason, and he's asking when broadcasting an event, what are the best practices, especially when it might be loud, using a format like Periscope? Uh, when it might be loud. Is that yeah. What you're yeah. Yeah. I think um, I think probably we'll we'll talk about that in more detail when we talk about the platforms. But the idea is there's going to be um, different um, there are going to be um, different recommended uh, best practices depending on the platform you're using. So a platform like Periscope lends itself to the very um, what I call authentic off the cuff type live stream. If people are not looking on Periscope for highly produced broadcast quality live streams. Um, you're giving them sort of an inside sneak peek of what you're doing, like a fly on the wall view. So people aren't coming to Periscope looking for um, the same type of video content they would be looking for on YouTube. They're going to be very forgiving of the quality, um, especially because a huge um, component that affects the quality is not just your connection, but the viewer's connection. A lot of people are watching over um, a, a mobile network. And so there's a lot of variables there. So my, my first um, thought would just be, don't worry too much about it. Um, people aren't going to care that much. But um, when we talk about hardware in a little bit, um, we can talk about a few other ways that even even with those constraints, um, you know, there might there might be ways to do a good job with it. So let's come uh, back to the rest of that in a little bit. Um, here on this slide is just I, I was just saying it's just a quick example of a blog post promoting this uh, live stream that we're on right now, and uh, obviously there'll be many more with the content afterwards too. Um, here's where we're going to talk about um, conversion um, during a live stream. Um, again, um, depending on the platforms that you're thinking of, this could be easier or harder. A platform like Periscope doesn't lend itself to conversion very easily, other than uh, very simple conversions like um, following you so they get notified of your next uh, broadcast or something like that. Other platforms are obviously designed for that purpose specifically. Um, so. Um, here are uh, but, uh, some ways that you can um, uh, engage your audience and therefore convert them during a broadcast. Um, social platforms um, give you those other benefits, like we talked about, of them bringing their audience into the into the uh, into the fold, so to speak. Um, landing pages give you a lot of ability to put other content on the landing page around the broadcast that you want your audience to engage with, like for example, a Twitter chat or something like that. Um, uh, Twitter is a great way to engage your viewers during the. Um, live stream itself. 
Uh, like I mentioned, you're welcome to tweet at me while we're doing this, and I'd love to um, stay in touch with you that way. And um, you can take questions um, using social. You can um, also try to get a second engagement um, uh, like on, on, on route to your to your ultimate conversion, and you can use giveaways and contests and things like that on social for that. You can also charge for um, premium, live, premium live stream content. In other words, viewing the live stream could in itself be the conversion that you're looking for if you, um, if you charge for that. Um, here is an example of a broadcast one of our clients does. Um, you have to purchase a pass to watch, and then you could log in on the player on the left, but on the right you immediately have access to all the other um, people watching um, the broadcast and, and, and what they're talking about online. This is a very social event, obviously, so there's a lot of engagement online during the event. So those are all the, uh, a, a quick overview of all of the things that you could do with live video to uh, make it worth your time and see a ton of engagement and conversion. So let's talk about actually getting down and dirty and doing it. Um, I think um, we should go over a few things first and the most important of which is defining your goal. Um, so that's going to impact your uh, uh, selection of a platform. That's going to impact your frequency. That's going to impact the type of content that you have. And um, that's the most important thing. So let's say um, your goal, well, actually, let's do it this way. Let's look at some of the platforms, and then we can talk about what goals would align with those platforms. I think that would be more useful to you. So here's um, an example. There's obviously many more than this. Two come to mind as sort of similar, um, Periscope and then the um, once popular Meerkat, which was sort of a predecessor to Periscope. Um, these are very social um, platforms. Um, like uh, we got the question from, I think it was Jason earlier, um, you know, there's obviously no expectation of um, quality of broadcast here. Um, the idea is you're giving people immediate instant access. You're taking into account the fact that you already have a large Twitter audience. And um, and then you're also um, you're also getting um, the audience to grow using uh, the social platform, the nature of the social platform. So um, these are two options. This is sort of a get your feet wet type option, and something that often fits well into a larger live stream strategy. Um, unto itself, we don't find it incredibly useful with a lot of our clients, other than for brand recognition and um, sort of uh, continued uh, awareness of the. Um, you know, customer retention type brand awareness. Um, but when we're talking more about conversions, we're looking at other platforms, stuff like this. Um, we're looking at a lot of different options here. Um, Livestream.com is a great option. Um, we'll just go through them briefly, but we'll talk about different circumstances in which you might use them. Um, Livestream.com is a great option if you're looking for more advanced features. This is an expensive platform. Um, to do a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, you're looking at at least $1,000 a month, but it gives you access to all sorts of different things. Um, that you wouldn't otherwise have access to, white labeling the player so that it's only branded with your branding and not, not the company you know, who's processing the stream. Um, uh, restricted embedding, meaning you can embed it on your site, but a news uh, website can't just pick it up and direct people to their site to watch instead. Um, uh, insertion of um, ads um, uh, before, during, and after the broadcast. Advanced tracking, it integrates with Google Analytics and gives you a lot of information there. So it's a very powerful platform. Um, very similar, actually, to Ustream, um, which you also see on this slide, but even more powerful. Ustream was one of the first to the game. Ustream was one of the first to do um, sort of a widely uh, you know, uh, distributed online live streams. And it's been around a long time. And they do a good job. Um, Livestream has a little bit more rapport lately for using uh, more advanced features. YouTube Live is also very similar, actually, but gets almost no credit. Um, Google released it uh, a while back very quietly, didn't make a big deal out of it. Um, most accounts, most channels on YouTube are eligible for live broadcasts if you um, just request that they enable it. It's an account setting, and it's very simple. This gives you a lot of ability to um, easily add content to YouTube after the fact, help your viewers discover your other YouTube content while they're watching, help you grow the subscriptions to your YouTube channel quickly, and a bunch of other um, sort of YouTube-centric goals. Um, Google Hangouts on Air, the one you see right below that, actually is powered by YouTube Live. It's actually the exact same technology. It's just initiated in a different way, and it allows you to bring multiple people into the broadcast from multiple locations. So, 
similar. It still lets you export it to YouTube right after the fact. But uh, you and I could be doing it from different sides of the country and uh, switching back and forth or having us on screen at the same time, that sort of thing. It's actually very reminiscent of what Blab does, which is the um, top center logo that you see there. Blab is a newer platform, sort of yet to be determined how widely it'll catch on. They do some really cool stuff, though. Um, and uh, it can, it's sort of a, sort of a, a hybrid between a more social um, platform like uh, um, Periscope or, or Meerkat. Uh, in the sense that you just connect to Twitter to uh, to watch, but it also has some more uh, cool features like Google Hangouts on there. Uh, Twitch is very gaming centric. It's very effective if uh, you're trying to reach people in that industry. They were actually one of the very first companies to do this, but their audience. Hi, we have a bit of an audio problem. So, um, Chad, we can't hear you. If you could let me know in the questions if you can hear me, that would be great. We're actually in different locations, and that might help us get to the bottom of the sound. Okay, great. So, Chad, people can hear me, but they aren't able to hear you right now. Let's give Chad just a second to jump back on. Careful in the near future, especially hey, um, if Chad, you're um, um you're Chad. Yeah, your sound cut out for yeah. about a minute and a half. You were talking about Twitch, and I think that's about where it cut off. Okay. that's fine. Are we good now? Everybody, yeah. um, let us I, know maybe if you can hear me now. Okay, Chad is back. Yay! All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry guys, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. This is um, this is actually something we're going to talk about later on, but there's always um, the possibility of things like this going on when you're watching. Sometimes it's um, related to your viewers' connection. Sometimes it's related to your connection. So we can actually talk about how to handle stuff like that. But uh, after I mentioned Twitch, I was just mentioning uh, Facebook mentions. Um, it's a relatively new um, opportunity from Facebook to do live video on Facebook, and. Uh, it's um, going to be rolled out on a wider scale soon. They're already starting to roll it out. Uh, when I put this deck together, Facebook Mentions was the only way to use live video on Facebook. And uh, that was only for verified celebrity pages on Facebook. But they're already starting to roll it out um, under a different name to more pages and profiles. So if you don't have access to it now, you will soon. And I think that's going to be a very powerful way to um, distribute live video content just because of the, the sheer um, numbers of people that are on Facebook far, far more around the world than on Twitter. And um, if they integrate it with the ad platform so that you can uh, do basically live video, promoted live video ads, I think you'll see a ton of value for it from a marketing perspective. So that's a bit, bit of a platform discussion. Obviously, um, the key there is um, determining your goals first and then having a discussion about what type of platform will help you meet those goals best. That's sort of the conversation that we facilitate with our clients. Um, with gear, I'd like to have a, basically a similar um, discussion, but in a in, um, uh, briefer uh, amount of time. Basically, um, the platform is going to dictate the gear. Um, in many cases, um, you'll be able to do it yourself. And in other cases, you'll need to work with someone who can provide the gear. But um, there's basically always three things you need. You need a camera, you need a microphone, and you need a way to put that video content on the internet. Sometimes that's all in one. If you use Periscope, the camera, the microphone, and the broadcast solution are all inside your iPhone. Um, if you want to work with a more complex platform and do more with the content that you have, you may need to work with a vendor and select different gear. Here's some different options. This is just a sampling, but you can obviously use your iPhone. You can obviously use a high-quality webcam like you see in the upper right corner to do it yourself at your desk. You can go with something more prosumer like you see below that. That's a Canon camera that gives you HD studio quality, but at a much lower price. And then on top of the camera, at the very bottom of the page, you see Livestream.com's broadcast box. That's a way to get your content on the internet if you're using some sort of external camera like that. So now you've got your broadcast, you've got your equipment, you've got a goal and a plan. So now how do you get people to watch? This is um, sort of one of the more interesting things that we can talk about, and it's going to tie into what Susan's going to talk about too. 
a um, couple options. The, obviously, the best case scenario is that you already have a large social or email audience that you can um, just let them know. And as long as you have compelling content and they have plenty of notice, they'll tune in. Um, that's assuming you've built an engaged audience to begin with. Um, and you have a, a good reason to have a live stream. In other words, you're talking about something that they actually care about. Um, if you don't have a big audience, you still need to have content that people care about, but you might need some help getting people to find out about it. So here are some suggestions that we utilize with a lot of our clients. You can call on partners um, to help, uh, just figuring out who the influencers are in the space. Um, that means, um, you know, if we're going to do a live stream about live streaming, sort of like we're doing now, we'd want to find people who have a large social following in the social media marketing space and let them have their follow uh, have them let their know let, let their followers know about it. Um, of course, you can um, invite more people to be on the live stream. So if I um, I'm struggling to get people to care about live streaming and watch my broadcast about live streaming, then all I might have to do is find someone else who has a larger audience and is also um, connected to the topic and um, perhaps interview them on the live stream instead of just pontificating so that they share the broadcast and help promote it with their audience. It'll help them, but it'll help you too. Um, targeted Facebook advertising is obviously a great way to find um, people to watch. As long as um, you do it well, you'll often get a really good return on your investment. And then, of course, you can partner with a larger organization, just like you might write a guest blog post. Um, you know, I might write a blog post about live streaming, but instead of publishing it on my site with a limited audience, I might try to publish it on Buffer's blog or something like that, which has a wider readership. The same is true with uh, live streams. If you want to get an initial audience, you might try um, going on someone else's show, going on someone else's broadcast, or seeing if you can broadcast to their audience in order to develop that audience. Very low cost, and it'll give you a lot of the return that you're looking for. Here's an example um, a webinar that I did um, a couple of weeks ago. I, I uh, joined up with uh, Neil Schaefer, who's an influencer in the social space, to do it. So he promoted it, and um, because of that, we got a lot more uh, fans uh, to tune in than we would have otherwise. Um, here, um, here's a way that we find uh, our clients are able to sort of jump into live streaming without too much extra work. What we encourage them to do is look at the ways they're already investing their time and money that could go hand in hand with a live stream. In other words, we only want a marginal cost increase of time and money, not a big one. So um, if you're already doing things like product launches, uh, Twitter chats where you're answering questions on Twitter, creating YouTube videos for your channel, interviewing people so that you can write a white paper or a blog post for your brand, putting on conferences or events, um, or even doing things on a daily basis that might be interesting to your audience, you can um, couple those with live streaming. So you could broadcast your product launch and collect email addresses. You could take your Twitter chat um, to Periscope so that you can take questions on Twitter but answer them on Periscope. If you're creating YouTube videos anyways, do a short portion of it live to um, get the excitement uh, up about it. If you've got to interview someone anyways to write a blog post, do it on a live stream so that they promote it to their audience and you can promote it to yours. If you're doing a conference or an event and you can double the amount of people that attend by selling virtual passes, why wouldn't you do that? The cost is so marginal compared to doubling the size of the venue, for example. Um, daily tasks, what I'm talking about here is stuff that's really interesting and sort of behind the scenes and gives your audience an exclusive feel, right? So if you're, um, if you're uh, a chef, you can broadcast your time in the kitchen. If uh, you're uh, you know, a retail space, you can show people what's going on in your store for people that don't live in New York or wherever. So um, some examples of uh, just kind of a way to get a lot of value out of live streaming without a ton of time. Here's an example of a conference, one of our clients. And so you can see they're charging um, uh, about $900 to go to the conference. And uh, they're charging about $600 to watch the live stream. So it's a significant discount, but they're still making a lot of money. They double the people that come to the conference, which they did, and um, only have a few, uh, only have a slightly lower cost. They're going to uh, make their money back very quickly. Um, here's where. We get to sort of the good stuff. This is how you're going to get people to watch by having good content. So we talked about how to promote it to your audience, but um, you have to have content that people care about. So that's true of all content marketing. That's true of blog posts. That's true of uh, writing um, posts for social. 
And um, what I want to show here is that content strategy that you already have or should have on a larger scale um, to identify the correct people and then entice them with free information. Um, that strategy still applies here. Live streaming isn't immune to that or outside of that. You want to just apply that same logic to this type of media. You have to have a, a powerful vision for your brand and then figure out how live video complements that vision. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll help you get to those goals quicker than any other form of media content. Part of that is the repurposing that we talked about and part of it is the, um, the amount of interest that there is in this type of media right now. Um, just uh, here's an example, broader content strategy. This is another one of our clients, uh, um, uh, like a legal tech startup in New York. And um, they already have all this content that they're doing about, um, uh, you know, finding the right lawyer for your business. And uh, this uh, live stream that we did with them um, was just a small part of that. Uh, so uh, they would watch the live stream and then kind of get put into this content funnel. Um, by which they'd continue to hear these same themes through email, through social, and uh, and then they'd convert by signing up to get matched with a lawyer. So I'm going to um, throw it back briefly to Susan, who's going to um, give you a lot more information about choosing the right content, how to do that, and um, and then how to um, you know do it in a way that helps you bring a wider audience to your broadcast. So Susan. Hi, Chad. Thanks. That was great. I'm glad you um, gave us some really good information, especially about options that make live streaming seem very accessible. Before we go any further, here's a question for you from John. What is your estimate of the participation of attendees when you promote a live event of people that are on a customer list? So if you're promoting a live event, what kind of estimate do you have for how many people are actually going to attend? Yeah, I mean, uh, so a couple things here. So this is all dependent on your audience, right? Um, so one thing that we try to encourage people to do is think long and hard, and this is something we counsel them on, on about the right incentives. So um, if you're um, live streaming uh, premium content, what I consider like a conference or something like that that people would normally pay for, you want to incentivize people who wouldn't otherwise go to, to watch online but not disincentivize people who would be going to just stay home and watch online. So there's a sweet spot, and that's, that's handled through targeted advertising, basically, and also pricing it exactly like you want. Um, pricing it so that there's a, uh, you know, enough of a difference that um, people see the value of paying a little extra to come do the networking and to come meet you and so on, um, but not so different that people think it's pointless to watch the live stream. So um, we help figure out, based on audience and so on, you know, how to... Um, incentivize uh, more people to watch without losing people from coming in person. Um, and then, um, you know, when you're also talking about um, how serious people are about it, you know, when you're, when you're doing free content, when you're doing, um, you know, an email-gated live stream or something like that, um, you're always going to have a high percentage of people who sign up but don't watch. That's not a bad thing. You're still, you're, you've still gotten them to take the first step, which is provide their email address or like your Facebook page or whatever you ask them to do. I don't think there's any harm in that. Um, what you wouldn't want to do is, is make any other decisions that are dependent on those um, type of people depending. So you might see anywhere from 30 to 40% of the people who register for a free live stream actually watching. Um, if you do a really good job targeting, then that number will be higher. Um, but I, again, I don't, I don't think there's a real problem with that. There's still people that you wouldn't have otherwise had access to at all. Um, does that answer the question, or did you want to go over yeah, anything no, more detail? Yeah, no, that's great. Good, thanks. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, of course. And I'll 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 poke back on at the end after Susan to answer more questions if there are more. Great. Thanks, Chad. Yeah, so I want to talk a little about using data to drive your live streaming content decisions. The key question in my mind is, should you just dive right in? And that's what this picture is showing. Should you just grab your phone and stream the first idea you have? Well, you can do that, um, but I have two reasons to suggest that you go forward in live streaming with just a little bit of caution. The first reason is a time-consuming experiment. You can spend a day on Blab. Don't cherry-pick the Blab labs that you watch, just go with what's there. And I think if you do that, you'll notice right away that there are some excellent content pieces. You'll also notice others that are simply 
not worth the time that you'll spend watching them. It might be just people listening to a radio show or watching people ad lib about that awkward thing that happened one time at an office party. I've seen both of those on Blab. Um, so that's a that's a long way to reach a decision about moving cautiously into live streaming. The short way, just trust me, you need a plan. Even with something as immediate as Blab or Periscope, where possibly the standards and expectations of what you're going to see are a little bit lower, uh, a plan is important. And I wanted to just point out to something that I saw published in Kiss Metrics, a piece called Periscope for Marketers. And in it, they planted live streaming firmly in the marketing camp. And this is what they said about it. They said, as with anything in marketing, you need to start with a plan. A well thought plan helps you stay focused on the right things, which ultimately will save you a ton of time and money. Their conclusion, which you can see there in the quote, is that without a plan, you're going to fail. So you need a live stream plan that will save you time, it will save you money, and it will help you to avoid failure. The other benefit of, of a plan is that it gives you time to tap into the resources of your team. In other marketing applications, we're in the habit of working with other people whose talents help us to produce great content. We need that same commitment to excellence with our live streaming. For example, I was working on some slides for a webinar that I was doing, and I spent a good bit of time on this one slide. I was so excited about it. It had pictures. It had graphics. I thought it was clever. So I uh, sent it over in HipChat to one of my colleagues. And um, I thought, good old James, he's going to love this. Tell me it's great. Promote me to chief of graphic design, all that stuff. His response, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> and I just was like, OK, great. I'm glad he told me. Um, but if I had run with that idea without running it by a colleague, I wouldn't have had you know, the opportunity to get that feedback before the broadcast. And the first person to say, I don't get it, would have been a potential customer. So let's avoid that kind of situation. Um, let's plan. So better even than planning is to use data to make your plans. And essentially what I want you to take away from that is this, that your live stream content choices should be based on your audience's preferences. So before you turn on the camera, it's important to know what content is resonating with your audience. What do they like to share? What headlines grab their attention? And are there any trends that you can leverage? And then I think probably too, Facebook is always, always out there. Um, what works on Facebook? So identifying a trend and responding to it quickly is a great way to establish thought leadership and to position yourself as an industry leader wherever you're working. People want to follow the people who are on top of industry news. Knowing that news early can give you a competitive advantage and give you an opportunity to create content in response to a trend. For example, earlier this week, when Apple announced that it was shutting down Topsy, one of my colleagues was able to use our trending marketing dashboard to determine that people were sharing that news very quickly, and he wrote a blog post in response. Live streaming, I think, definitely lends itself to trend response just as well because it is so immediate. So what you see on the screen there is a, a, a shot of our BuzzSumo trending content. And this is specifically from all over the web, but you can also um, see trending content in smaller areas as well. You can establish custom feeds on topics that are of interest to you. And you can use our trending score, our total share count, and the timestamp. Hopefully with those three pieces of information, you can spot posts that are about to go viral before they reach a peak in their popularity. And you can know about any breaking industry news early while you still have time to respond. So this shows our listing for a piece of trending content and the blog post that our director wrote in response to identifying the, the trending content about Topsy. So using the most shared section of BuzzSumo, you can find the content that's really resonating with your audience and ask yourself if it's something that would lend itself to live streaming. As you look at the content that people have shared, you can ask yourself, could you produce a webinar? Could you interview someone? Could you maybe host a debate about these topics? You can also use BuzzSumo to find the most shared webinars on your topic. You can ask yourself then if those topics could be updated. Could you add a unique spin to those topics? 
maybe you could find things that it's been a while since they've been published or possibly just change the audience. Like if you notice the one that's listed on this slide, it's how to repurpose your social media content, a live webinar. I did something similar with that recently, but my audience for it was just subscribers to BuzzSumo. So I took a content idea and and changed up the audience. You can also look for great headline ideas on your topic. And if you don't want to actually research it, just go with zombie. Um, we have here zombie cruises, zombie news, zombie Disney, zombie RVs, zombie housing, zombie mathematicians, and my favorite zombie nativity scenes. Um, so you can definitely find uh, ideas for headlines that are going to grab attention from other people. You can also look and find the most shared content on popular video sites like Vimeo and YouTube. Since the content there is already video based, it's one step closer to live streaming than a blog post or infographic would be. And Chad, if you want to go to the next slide, um, you can also search within, um, you can search within, oh wait, just yeah, you can stop there. Thanks. Um, so you can search within a site as a whole, like looking for all the most shared content on YouTube. On this slide, you see an example of using the most shared section of our site to, sign, to find the best performing content from the last year. You could filter that to a narrower period of time. You could also use the trending site to just find content that's getting the most shares on a platform like YouTube. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that, you know, Facebook is huge. It had, according to them, 1 million daily active users in September of this year. So it's probably a good idea to know what they like. Um, and BuzzSumo has a Facebook analyzer that can help you do that. In the upper right, you're going to see my analysis of a topic. I just analyzed the performance of Facebook posts about Christmas. And surprisingly to me, the most popular type of Christmas post in the last six months was a video. Uh, not so surprising, uh, Christmas posts are definitely trending up as we approach um, December. So if you do discover something like that, that a certain type of post is performing best for a topic, you can do an additional analysis and really drill down into that type of content alone. So the other part of that slide shows just an analysis of the best performing Christmas videos. So I can get um, some further insight into the types of videos that people like. So uh, in a world with so much content, I think Mark Schaefer, who's the author of The Content Code, is right. He said that the idea that great content rises to the top is over. And I would certainly agree with that. So I just wanted to encourage you to think through how you're going to distribute live streaming video and other content assets, even from the beginning of your creation process. I think this is especially important if the content you're producing is going to have a short shelf life, um, if they won't be available later in some recorded format. So for all the content that you produce, we encourage people to develop their plans for amplifying it from the very beginning. You need to know things like who's sharing it, who's linking it, who's creating the best live stream content, and then ask yourself some questions. Are there people that you can collaborate with? Are there ways you can engage those people who are influencers? And and then I think it's always good as we um, talk about influencers to just ask yourself what you have to offer that those influencers might want. Now, for the sake of time, I want to make sure that we get to your questions in the rest of Chad's presentation. I just want to kind of roll through a couple of quick ways you can use BuzzSumo. BuzzSumo can help you to find the most shared content on a topic. And then you can use our View Sharers button to see who shared that. You can also use BuzzSumo to find the top authors of content on any topic. So these are people who are publishing content. You can look for the, the people whose content is getting the most shares. You can also search for influencers by topic. <clears throat> as well. So there are several ways you can find influencers and you can use BuzzSumo to monitor that content. And that's an important part of the process. After you've created something, it's good to know who shared it, who linked to it, and then to ask yourself some reflective questions. What did you learn through the process? How can you improve your next live stream project? And then I think um, Chad touched on this a good bit too. What other content formats can you look to and possibly repurpose content? Just 
just to get you thinking on that, I'm going to put two files in the handout section. These are basically a CSV and an Excel file that's a worksheet that you can use to develop a, a plan for repurposing content. So actually, there's only one of them. It's in an Excel file version. So if you want to grab that handout, you can. I'll let Chad take back over the reins and tell you a little bit more about taking another step with your content. Thanks, Susan. Um, so I think it's pretty clear that having good content is first and foremost with this type of marketing as with every type of digital marketing. So once you've done your research um, with uh, Basumo and you know what you want to present about and to whom you want to present it, um, the next step would be going through some of those things that we talked about already, um, choosing a platform, choosing your hardware. I saw there were a couple questions about hardware, and I promise I'll get to those in a second. Um, but um, what I want to just briefly mention is the circumstances in which you uh, would want to work with a, a partner uh, in order to produce your content. So. Um, as we've proven in this webinar, live streaming is very powerful. It's cheap. It's easy to jump in once you have a plan. And most people are already trying it. So you have to stand out. Um, what, um, what Susan pointed out is true. Um, it's not just enough um, to be flashier and to have enough um, like it used to be. Um, but if you're having good content and you're um, also presenting it well, you have the best chance of having it gain traction and meeting the goals that you set. So. Um, what I want to show you here is you have to really differentiate yourself, not just with content, but with quality. Um, every platform is a little different, but certain platforms are going to have much higher expectations of quality uh, along with uh, certain delivery methods. So, for example, if you're charging for your content, if people are going to pay $500 for a live streaming pass at your conference, they're going to expect it to look really good and work 100% of the time. So those are different considerations that you'll have when you're comparing that to something like um, uh, you know, like a product launch party that you're going to periscope from the dance floor. So we're talking about um, very uh, broad, a very broad spectrum of types of live streams. Um, so sometimes you just need to make sure you're doing it better than the other guys. Um, here's um, some uh, ways that you might want to consider whether or not a professional live stream is, is right in that circumstance. Um, you'll consider um, the, dip, the balance between professional and organic. Um, just because you want it to feel authentic doesn't mean it has to be really bad. So um, we talked about the authentic feel that comes in Periscope. There are certainly ways to accomplish that with higher quality video too. That may help you meet more goals than something like Periscope, depending exactly what you're trying to do. Um, we talked about uh, paid uh, content absolutely has to be professionally produced because there's going to be an expectation that it's going to work all the time, every time. And uh, a good live stream partner, like my company, will not only help you with the production, but help you with the delivery and um, make sure that you're actually ready for success. If everyone who watches the live stream does what you want them to do, can you handle that? Can your landing page handle that? Are you um, equipped to follow up with them? So we'll help you with those sorts of things. So that is a brief um, overview of those types of things. Um, I'm not going to go through this. This is just different types of things that uh, my company does in terms of production and delivery, but I'd be happy to chat with you about that personally if you want to because I want to save um, quite a bit of time for your questions and maybe um, if Susan wants to we can go over the polls too because I'm interested to um, kind of chat about those. So there's my info. I'm going to um, answer your questions now, but if you think of more later, send me a tweet and we'll continue the conversation. Um, let me look through these questions here. I think, um, let me first mention to um, John who mentioned uh, he's here because I reached out to a couple influencers and asked them to share this webinar um, like I recommended to you. Um, John joined us through one of the influencers, so thanks for being here, John. Um, I think um, Jess was asking one of the gear, uh, the hardware gear questions that I mentioned. Um, Jess wanted to know if you can use um, other gear with Periscope. Um, the answer is no, not really. Um, Periscope is one of those platforms where if you choose to uh, reap their social benefits, you're also constrained by their requirements, um, and that's basically to use the mobile app. Um, you Could know, you use a mic with that? Are, like if you, is there a mic you can rig with your phone, or you couldn't do that either? So, so you, 
So yes, you could. So if you're if you're if you're working within the constraints of your phone, there are things you can do to get creative. So that that's what I was going to mention. I mean, you can you can cheat with like a number of things. There are mics that you can plug into your phone. Um, that um, that goes back a little bit to the other question we got earlier. Was it uh, Jason? Maybe I think um, asked about um, uh, you know audio quality when you're periscoping. So yes, you can. So depending exactly what you're trying to accomplish, there may be different mics that will do that. Obviously, you're a little limited as to what you can connect to your phone, but you can work um, through some of those things. Um, there are Bluetooth um, audio devices that may help you there. Um, but again, you need to consider what your goals are. I mean, there's sort of a, you know, there's a stigma against people who put photos on Instagram from the SLRs instead of their iPhone too. And you know, you want to be respectful of what the platform is designed for, not go to too much trouble. If you're going to that much trouble, it might be time to consider sort of a different platform that could better um, sort of meet your goals. Um, um, Scott was wondering when I mentioned about the Facebook Live thing. Um, so um, they're already rolling it out to certain profiles. So um, we'll differentiate here between a profile and a page. So pages. Um, who are uh, which are categorized as verified celebrity pages have had access to live video on Facebook through the Facebook Mentions mobile app, so much like Periscope, it's through the mobile app, um, for uh, half a year now or more. Um, you see a lot of people doing Q&As and that type of thing with it because the Mentions app is distributed exclusively to verified celebrities on Facebook. Some of our clients use it and um, it enables them to sort of take questions and answer them and, and do that in real time. Um, sort of like Periscope. Um, that is similar but a little different to the product that they're going to be distributing more widely, um, which I think is just going to um, be called basically Facebook Live or some variation of that. Um, it is being rolled out to um, individual, not to other pages yet, um, but other individual profiles on Facebook. So the way I think that they're um, seeing it being used initially is much like Periscope, a lot of friends talking to each other. and that sort of thing. So um, you'll see it um, in your um, Facebook mobile app soon um, as a new type of post when you go to make a post. Um, you may already have access to it depending. So try that. Um, in fact, I'd love to hear from you guys if you try that and let me know how it works. And If you want to send me a tweet, we'll be doing some writing about it on our blog and I'd be happy to feature um, your successes um, if you let me know about them. Um, Here's one for you, Chad. With uh, live with live broadcasting, do we have to worry about copyright infringement when doing a live stream? Yeah. So um, a couple of answers to that question. Um, yes. Um, however, um, there's a lot of forgiveness that goes on in that regard. So let me give you a few examples. Um, if you are going to uh, periscope a concert, if you're at um, a concert, um, that's not going to create any problems for you because the band who owns the copyright is performing it and you're distributing a little more widely. Um, where you might run into trouble is if you try doing things like on a more professional level, let's say you're broadcasting your conference and at your conference in between sessions you play um, music tracks that um, hopefully you secured licensing for for your conference, maybe you didn't, but whether or not um, you're playing them in the room, if you pump those into the broadcast, you're probably going to get flagged um, on certain platforms, like YouTube Live, for example. YouTube has their, their massive um, copyright claims database that they use with YouTube videos. They apply that to the live videos, too. Not live. They're not going to shut your um, broadcast down live. But if you, if you pump all those tracks in and they're um, in ingrained in the audio of the broadcast, as soon as um, the broadcast is over and that video is published on YouTube, they're going to strip the audio from it because of your copyright claim or restrict the viewing in certain countries or... Um, in the worst case scenario, um, delete the video. So um, you have to be mindful of those things, especially as you're thinking about how you're going to distribute the content after the live stream. So for example, even if you do a Periscope and then you save the Periscope to put it on YouTube later or something like that, um, if you used copyrighted um, music or something in it, um, those other platforms may flag it later. Um, it's a little bit yet to be determined what Facebook is going to do with um, live video copyright um, claims, we'll see what happens. Um, of course, even regardless of what the computers catch and don't catch, you need to be conscientious of what a human being could catch and file a report about. So you should be just as careful as if you were doing a live event. So if you're going to put a conference on, you're going to want to make sure that you're securing the licensing to play the tracks that you're going to play in the room and that sort of thing. Um, same scenario here. Um, I, Susan, do you want to ask me? I mean, I have a couple more I can do here. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Um, 
I, I'm just reading the last question about um, different platforms being suited to different types of content. The question is, um, are there different platforms that are more suited to a specific kind of content? Um, um, talking for social media, um, TV shows. I, I, I get the question. I think probably um, the answer is yes, but you're going to have to do some research about that. I mean, depending exactly what type of, you know, it's about knowing your audience, right? So my audience, when I do live streams about live streaming and other types of content, is a very social audience. It's an audience that um, is used to using cutting edge, I, I say cutting edge loosely, but stuff like Blab or, um, uh, you know, uh, when Google Hangouts was new, that everybody jumped on that. Um, so my audience, I know, will have no problem hopping on those platforms to chat with me about different stuff. Um, depending on your audience, it may not be suited to those types of things. So I hope that answers your question. If you're um, getting at something different, just go ahead and pop, uh, pop an explanation in there. Um, let me answer, I saw a question, I want to I want to make sure I'm getting, um, Kristen, what you're asking. Um, I think I, I uh, you were probably asking me to reference some of my thing at the time. You said, how much notice would you give? Um, I, if you're asking about, um, if you want to clarify for me, but I think what you're asking is, um, how much notice would you give that you're doing a broadcast? Um, I think the answer depends on uh, how your, um, what your goals are for the broadcast. Um, so if you're charging for it, um, when we're talking about, um, charging for premium content with our, our conference clients, we're going to counsel them to um, announce the live stream after they've sold a good chunk of the tickets that they want to sell in the room. That's another part of that strategy that we discussed about making sure that um, making sure that we're meeting our other goals by incentivizing the right action. So we'll start pushing the live stream once they two-thirds filled the um, in-person registrations or something like that. Um, and that way you're starting to reach new people who definitely wouldn't have attended otherwise. Um, when you're talking about other more social free content, um, generally I would say the more notice the better. Um, get people to get it on their calendar. If you can give them an iCal um, download link on the landing page where they register, it'll be in their calendar, they'll remember to watch it. That's part of the reason so many people tune into webinars because um, Citrix gives you a um, calendar invite. Um, so those types of things, um, a lot of notice is better and even more important than notice though would be a, um, a, a regular schedule. If you can broadcast, if, if you're doing a free broadcast and you're using a social platform like Periscope, if your audience knows that every Monday at 7 p.m. you're going to talk about your weekend, you'll get more and more people tuning in each week, again assuming you have good content. Um, so sticking to a regular schedule, not saying you can't do extra, but avoiding trying to do less so that when people think you're on, you're on. Um, you'll have a lot of success with that and you'll see your audience grow over time. Um, live streams, when you do them right, will really snowball. You'll see a growth over time that um, some other content um, provides, but you'll see it happen faster here. Sort of like um, with Instagram, when you're, um, when you're doing a, a solid content marketing strategy on Instagram, you're always going to be posting on a regular basis. Your audience will look for your picture at a certain time on a certain day. Um, and I think that's... Um, that's really effective here. Um, let's see what other questions we've got here. There was one from John um, at the beginning about he had said that um, that people sometimes rely on their own audience on the audience of the platform. So he was asking a little bit more about um, about generating a platform or, or generating audience events. See if I can find. Uh, question. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna read his question here. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. All right, John. I see your question here. So what you're asking is, um, for example, like um, if you're gonna do a blab, uh, if you're gonna do a, uh, a chat on blab, um, can you fall into the trap of um, only relying on people who are on Blab finding it and it becomes sort of a closed loop and you're not bringing new people into the audience? Yeah, I think, I think that's very dangerous. That's why cross-promotion is so important. That's sort of what we're talking about when we're talking about reaching out to influencers, um, doing your research with Sumo to find out who the people that are doing this sort of thing are. Um, that's why that's so important because you don't want to have a, clu a closed loop where um, people only find out about your broadcast by watching your last one and they only watch your last one because it popped up in their, you know, blab feed or whatever or Periscope. Um, the most, the, the more you can do to, um, 
you know, uh, cross-promote things between your audiences, the better um, you'll be. And try to do it in reverse, too. So just think about that in the other direction. When you're doing a, um, a live stream, you may encourage people to go check out a blog post on your website for more information, and then you're getting them out of the closed loop. You're getting them out of the webinar or, or live stream circuit and onto your website where they may be able to take another conversion step once they're there. So um, that's actually a really good thought. And um, whatever you can do to avoid those closed loops um, is, uh, is a really good idea. Um, let me... One thing that we're going to do that sort of is, I guess, crossing platforms here is I have a, a Pinterest board that I pulled some resources into, and I will make that Pinterest board live so you can tap into some of the research that that I did in preparation for this. So you can uh, interact with some different types of content there. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And, um, you know, obviously, same idea. We've got a blog post on our website with more in-depth of a lot of the stuff we talked about. We're going to be writing a bunch more soon. As I mentioned, I, I'd love, uh, love to feature other people who are effectively using live video. So if you have a story, fa um, failure or success, or how you've improved, um, I'd love to write about that. Um, that actually uh, sort of brings me to the polls, because I think I have some information about how many of you are doing that? Is it okay if we talk about those, Susan? Sure, yeah. So here are the results on people who have and have not created a live streaming piece. So 70% of the people who were logged on at the beginning have not created a live streaming piece. And right. let's go and on to the next. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, well, let's look. No, no, that's fine. I, I, wanted, to, um, I wanted to look at the uh, platforms, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so platforms for live streaming. Here we go. Periscope wins so, the um, <laughs> Yeah, so so this is sort of what I expected. So um, according to that first poll, a good chunk of you have not um, done a broadcast. But of those of you that have, um, it looks like most of you are using um, some of the platforms with the lowest barriers to entry. Periscope, obviously, there's almost no barrier to entry. Um, it's true of other um, social platforms like that. And then um, go to webinar and webinar software. Um, obviously is a very familiar format to people and it gives you a kind of a, a, a tried and true method of conversion. Um, and I'm not surprised to see Livestream.com and YouTube Live being some of the lower ones. Um, I'm actually I'm glad to see that um, quite a few of you are using YouTube Live. I think it's one of the most powerful tools out there and it happens to be free. Um, we use um, a lot of other tools too that are very expensive with our clients to do more advanced stuff, but if we can, I love to recommend YouTube Live because of how easy um, how easy it is to get started with it and how, how low cost it is. So um, I think my point was just um, a lot of you have not jumped into this yet. So um, uh, to, to Susan's point, um, I, I would recommend that the first step to do so would be to just do a little research, figure out what you think you can entice people with, how can you offer them some value, um, how can you offer them a lot of um, content that they'll find useful before you ask for something in return. And then once you figure that out, you can um, talk amongst your marketing team or you can talk with me and my company and you're going to need to come up with a plan for how to effectively distribute that content. How can you get it in front of people and how can you get them to convert? And I think you'll, I think you'll find a lot of success with it. It's, it's hard to not find success if you put in a little work and you get it right. So what other poll questions did we have, Susan? Uh, the other questions were, let's see. Um, have you ever used a professional for live streaming? The variety, or most of the audience said no. And yeah, so that's very typical. Yeah, and then do you use BuzzSumo? About about <laughs> three quarters of you use BuzzSumo. So thanks for that. Keep it up. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Okay. I love BuzzSumo too, and I, I, uh, I'm glad to see you guys are doing that. And, um, you know, I, I, I saw a little less than 10% of you are working with a live stream professional right now, and I think that's, um, that's very typical. Uh, most of our clients hadn't really considered it before we had a conversation with them about how they can set themselves apart doing that. So if um, if you want to have a conversation about that, um, I'd even be happy to just give you some tips. and Whatever you find useful, just send me a tweet and um, we'll go from there. I think we're sort of out of time, Susan. Huh? Yep, I think so. So thanks everyone for being here today. <laughs> There's Chad's contact information, chad at abson.com and uh, you can reach me, Susan at buzzsumo.com. We'll send you a recorded version of this live event and we'll keep you posted if we have any other content that we spin off from this. So thanks so much for your time, Chad. We really appreciate your expertise and sharing it here. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye, guys.